What's good, y'all? It's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out Jim Cornette on fans disagreeing with his thoughts on the Uncle Howdy and Wyatt Six. Now, um, I did check out his uh initial um review or reaction or his initial review of of the whole Uncle Howdy stuff, and you could tell just off of the supernatural aspect and how things was done. If you know anything about Jim Cornette, you know he wasn't probably going to be a big fan of it. And obviously, he wasn't. Um, I did figure there was going to be some type of backlash or people disagreeing with this point. Because I think the general consensus is a lot of people like what they're doing with the Wyatt family and stuff like that. And including me. I enjoyed it. And I had to disagree with him on his take on that video. But that's the thing about people having their opinions you can agree to disagree and i figured this was going to be the case with a lot of people and obviously he's going to talk about it so we're going to get right into this one should be a good one i want to see what jim has to say about fans just disagreeing with him so why don't we talk about yeah. raw now i will say going into it we've seen more disagreement with you and me from the listeners and the comments on youtube and on various social media platforms although a lot of people agree with us more people than we've seen for anything in a while who are either into the Uncle Howdy stuff or wanting to give it a chance or don't understand why we don't see it as brilliant. And I guess I'll just say that here at the top of the show because that's how we ended last week's show, the murder <laughs> of the entire crew of Monday Night Raw, whatever the f*** happened. Fortunately, they were able to find another production crew and, and uh, you know, restaff Gorilla, but go ahead. But yeah, that, uh, that's the lead into Monday Night Raw this past week. Another sellout, I believe, just like every other Monday. Well, let me say first about the people who, because we have had more people that normally disagree with us on anything, disagree with us on the Wyatts. And let me say that after weighing everything carefully, pro and con, listening to some of the feedback from the Cult of Cornet listeners and Carefully considering everything, I've I've got to admit that I don't care. <laughs> I don't give two French fried titty fucks. I don't like it. And that's that's Jim. Doesn't matter if you disagree with him or complain to him on Twitter or whatever. Jim, that Jim is Jim. That's how he is. He's stuck in his ways in the sense of what he likes and what he don't like. And I can't get mad at that. That's his opinion. That's his opinion. Do I disagree with him? Of course. You know, in this particular situation, I definitely do disagree. I love what they're doing with the Wyatts, and it's going to be very interesting for me personally to see where they take this. But not everybody's going to like it, and that's okay. That's fine to agree to disagree. It's okay. And here's why. And don't come at me with the goddamn... See, I'm going to be cranky today, even though it rained. <laughs> don't come at me with well, undertaker and kane had the supernatural power i was never in favor of undertaker ascending to heaven i believe i've told the story of how i hid behind the ring post rather than get on camera for that because he was literally dying and going to heaven on screen in front of our eyes i wasn't in favor <laughs> of either one of them being able to throw lightning bolts magically from the ceiling <laughs> but i love the gimmicks that were the wrestling gimmicks uh, kevin sullivan's band of weirdos and oddities in florida as, as we've we've told a story when kevin's been on the program several years ago the people the fans believed that they were legitimately some type of devil worshipers even though they never said devil or satan they thought they were they you know they burned their their uh, uh, fucking fans van one time. Remember the story about the weirdos that were following them around because they thought they were weird too? The other fans burned their goddamn van because they, but they thought it, it, they weren't teleporting themselves anywhere. The other people in the promotion and the, the other wrestlers weren't cooperating with it. Obviously, the... The, the the whole production just didn't stop so that they could wander through like zombies to ominous music playing over the PA system. I don't have a problem with spooky gimmicks or 
horror inspired bullshit. I don't have a problem with the goddamn guy in a fucking horror movie mask right in the ring, a big fucking guy kicking his shit out of whatever the fuck, but not when it defies believability <laughs> and that other people and the entire promotion and production are cooperating with it. <laughs> then it's bullshit. That's not what wrestling is about. It, then that I get his point. I, I get where he's coming from. Because when you really break it down, a couple of weeks ago on Monday Night Raw, Uncle Howdy and his gang murdered people. Or it's implied that they attacked people and, and, and uh, packed them up. Brutally assaulted people. <laughs> and they just kept rolling the cameras. I get that. I understand that. But from an entertainment standpoint, that shit was entertaining as fuck. It's that weird dynamic that wrestling has. Some people may think it's hokey and cringe. Me personally, I I I, I enjoy it. Do live horror movie shows, plays, things, whatever that would be. But it's it would be the same thing as if the gimmick was that Samantha Stevens, the new girl champion is a witch, and she twitches her nose, and shit appears in the ring. No. <laughs> so that's why I don't like it, because it's not what wrestling is in any way, shape, or form, whether modern or territory days or the days of Strangler Lewis, for fuck's sake. Does that make any sense, Brian? It makes sense, and I'll agree with it, and I'll talk a little bit more about it here instead of later on when we talk about the uh, segment. But, you know, my feelings are the same as it was with the Bray Wyatt segments. Clearly creative, clearly someone influenced by whatever, the ring. Clearly something that someone should go to Hollywood and work on. Shouldn't be on a wrestling show. It doesn't make sense. Explain how it exists. You can't. And then people go, oh, well, you, you just got to give into it. That's what people said when Bray Wyatt came back last time. Just go with it. And it got worse and worse and worse. And I know a lot of people are raving about the Bo Dallas interview, him interviewing himself. I said it on Twitter. You'll get it. It was like a Mike Leno video. Like it, <laughs> it rewound itself and the tracking issues would come and go, then perfect quality. And Mike Leno is interviewing a person who... And once again... They both don't like it. And this is this is nothing new. This is nothing that they just don't like anything in relation to the spooky Wyatt stuff. They've been saying it since, you know, Bray was alive. They just wasn't a big fan of it. So I was not surprised by their reaction or, you know, their their issues with the segment. Once again, not everybody's going to like this. But me personally, I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. I thought it was entertaining. I thought it was very emotional the, the bo dallas promos and i i thought it was, it was it was creative bro that's just my personal take on it I, I think they got something special and at the end of the day the fans like it the fans care about it once the fans start turning their back on it then you may want to do something different but right now the fans are eating this up then mike leno is writing the responses of that person <laughs> that's exactly right but one other thought about this and I saw some other people jump on it. And I got to admit, it, it is a, it is interesting. All the members of the Wyatt Six, all six of them, wherever they went to after the show last week, Arby's or whatever, they took a picture of some fan. So it, is <laughs> it wasn't Arby's. It was Whataburger. <laughs> but I get it. They were all, right after that whole situation, they were all eating some Whataburger. I think they mass murdered some people. <laughs> some fan with... All six of these monsters out of character smiling, eating their roast beef. At Arby's. I don't remember if it was Arby's. Maybe it was Applebee's. Maybe it was... Oh, like there's five Raxes left in the goddamn country. I don't know where they were, but it was all of them out of character with a smiling, happy fan. Uh. Dexter Loomis and some other guy who was probably in NXT and someone else and Nikki Cross. And... and uh, <clears throat> And if and before somebody says, oh, well, nobody really believes they're zombies, which is the point, by the way, when do you remember pictures of Undertaker with a goddamn fan in the first 
six months of his career when he's supposed to be the dead man and he's at McDonald's hoisting a burger with some fucking kid. When when did that ever surface? It didn't. <sighs> it didn't. It's that's why it's so shocking now when you see the Undertaker and he's like such a happy, jovial, storytelling, nice guy. He didn't say fucking boo. I was around him at fan events, like WWF sanctioned fan events in like 92, 93. Yeah. He didn't say anything to anyone. He stayed in character the entire time. And to their point on that, I think it's just a different time period. Social media and everyone having a phone nowadays, it's harder to stay in character than it has been before in the past. It just is. It's as simple as that. There's really no way around that. You could try to stay in character as much as you possibly can, but it's harder to do that because everyone has a phone. Everyone has a device. Social media. Someone can tweet your, hey, I just saw, say, I just saw Braun Breaker at the mall. You know what I'm saying? And he was, you know, he was he was signing autographs or whatever. Like, it's, it's you know, any of your favorite wrestler or say you saw Solo. Oh, I just saw Solo at, at a food place. And I, I took a picture of him. Picture with him. Some, now, some wrestlers will try to keep the kayfabe alive as well. But once again, it is a different time period. So, I will say it's much harder to kind of just, you know, move a certain way. But at the end of the day it's wrestling is is so mainstream now it's harder to get away with that and you're gonna most likely run into some fans that want to take a picture with you the question is do you take the picture or do you not that's really what it comes down to because you know if you take that picture they're going to post it there's no way around it unless you tell them no unless you tell everyone that you're around now nah, i can't take no pictures with you you could do that to try to keep the kayfabe of your character alive but i don't know it's going to be kind of hard to do that. TMZ gets a shot to shot of you and your loving family on a beach somewhere and you didn't know they took the picture. You know what I'm saying? So, it's just different time. Didn't break at all. And I think it was like <laughs> that on the road too with Percy. Yes. And and that's that's how he is still an icon 30 years later or whatever the fuck. But nevertheless, so that's that's our feelings on the Wyatt family uh, of their, their, uh, somebody said no, the Wyatt six, but there, who's six? I thought there was five. Is there five or six? Somebody said there was only five. Do they still have one to go? Who I, are these people? I don't know. Hold on. I'm pulling up the photo right There's now. There's a pig and a goat. <laughs> and a uh, uh, a rabbit, and uh, the ugly girl that crawls around. <laughs> hey, yo, <damn. laughs> and Uncle Howdy. Well, to be fair, there's no roast beef sandwich. I'm looking at the photo now. There are indeed five of them, and Bo Dallas is holding up a supersized drink from whatever this establishment is, and uh, Eric burger. Rowan is sitting in a uh, chair, like you would see at a McDonald's or something. Is he the rabbit? I don't know. He used to be the red beard. Well, he is the red beard. He still has a red beard well, in this photo. Yes, but he may be the did the did the kill the wabbit to kill the wabbit. All right. I don't. So the point is, there six or is there five or what's going on? There's here? five. I don't know. If Bray Wyatt uh, spiritually is the six. <laughs> oh or my there's god! A six <laughs> puppet come to life that we're waiting for. <laughs> I also don't know why anyone cares, but. That's, uh, <laughs> that's me, lifelong wrestling fan. All righty. <laughs> he said, I don't know why you're not afraid cares. of burning in hell. Have you seen that commercial? Ron Reagan Jr.? Ron Reagan Jr., my, my man, my man. The son of the conservative vegetable brain uh, is a lifelong atheist. He does the commercial and he says, Ron Reagan, lifelong atheist, not afraid of burning in hell. What? Yeah, it's easy to say that until you start dropping into a fiery pit. And then you're like, I'm fucking afraid. Ah, I'm tired. <laughs> he said, I'm fucking afraid. <laughs> he said, I'm fucking afraid. It's too late, my boy. You cook to a crisp. Yeah, man, I wanted to check this out because obviously people have their opinions about um, 
um, Jim Cornette's initial thoughts of the whole Wyatt's attacking Monday Night Raw officials and stuff like that. And like I said, I did see it off camera. I figured he wasn't going to like it. And once I heard what he said, I was like, yep, he definitely didn't like it. And that's okay. It's okay to have different opinions. It's fine. There's no need to send hate towards anyone. You can agree to disagree. I don't always agree with Jim Cornette and his takes because I know he's from a different different style of wrestling and ideal of wrestling he's from a yesteryear so what he may like in wrestling he's you know back then it you know it probably is not going to translate to what what modern wrestling is now today you know there's still some things that he does like about it but there's a lot of things that he preferred how things were done back in the day than what it is now and you know that's just just how you know that's the area he grew up in so he's not a fan of this he's never been a fan of the the mysterious you know supernatural aspects that you know wrestling promotions try to incorporate with some of their characters he's never been a fan so it is what it is it's okay to agree to disagree comment down below let me know how do y'all feel about the wyatt characters and faction um do, do you are y'all um a fan of uncle howdy and what they got going on here are you indifferent or are you not a big fan of it at all let me know down below but i appreciate our love support road to 150k and i'm still gonna speed to youtube wrestling champion of the world appreciate y'all kidding me see you next one peace